Like, I don't even know how I'm going to function if someone tells me <laughs> that I can't bring a moxie. Like, this isn't just a kid in China. This is my son. Like, this is my son. Like, I have already birthed him in my heart. He is my son. I have a new video for you guys because the stoffers are insane and I think we already know this but I have come across new information I'm honestly shook. So get ready to pay close attention, grab a snack, and wash it down with some hot tea because yes, we're talking about Micah Stoffer and James Stoffer here. They are probably most well known for giving up their Chinese adopted son after having him for a couple years. It's actually unfortunate because they never adopted Huxley. They just got him, used him as a cash cow, and then just gave him up, threw him away like he is trash. Thank God Huxley is safe, but Micah and James Stoffer are still out there, especially James Stoffer, and they act like nothing has ever happened. I want to go through some recent things I've gone, I've come across um, that Micah has posted in the past and that James has posted in the past that I find very, very cringe and problematic. And I also want to ask YouTube for like the 50th time, why do you continue to employ James Stoffer and Micah Stoffer? Like these people have committed crimes on your, on your platform and you continue to pay them and employ them. Any regular job would have fired their employee for what they have done, like James Stoffer. Um, first off, I just want to go ahead and talk about um, their video they dropped. You know, it was in May and it was about Huxley and how they gave him up. It was a monetized video, as you can see an arrow on the corner. There's a little ad there and they made, they got a ton of views and made a ton of money off of this video talking about giving up their adopted son, which is kind of a sad and embarrassing thing, but they almost felt like victims in the video, and I think that's why people were so upset by the whole situation. Micah Stoffer has a channel that is just under 700,000 subscribers. She lost a lot of subscribers after the whole like incident, and she actually makes zero dollars on YouTube, which is amazing, so. I'm glad that they aren't paying her, at least, for what she's done, because this woman is actually, like, the most insane person I've seen on YouTube. I'm talking, like, the type of person who creates a whole fundraiser thing so that her subscribers can pay for her Chinese adopted son and pay for her to go there and get him. Then she goes over there and gets him on her YouTuber subs money on their cash. She brings him back to the States. She sets up a whole company, um, you know, uses him as promo and promotional videos, makes a ton of content after, you know, about him. But before she like showed his face to her subscribers and did a face reveal, which again is kind of weird to me, like, okay, all these people donated a ton of money so you could buy your son and you're like teasing a face, uh, face reveal. What she did, what she decided to do, was to have more people spend more money to pay for that face reveal. She literally had her subscribers and donors donate to a like puzzle picture website where every person could donate some money. It would go to a puzzle piece and the puzzle piece would put together the picture of their son. It sounds really hipster and you know, um, aesthetic, but it's really cringe to think about Every single instance of Huxley's life with the Stauffer family was revolved around money or making money. Like, they never thought about Huxley and money in a separate instance. It was always like, how can we use this man to make more money? Watch just how just cringe this clip is and think about how you would feel being her adopted son. The first thing I want to fill you in on is we are doing a little fundraiser for little Huxley. It's done. Um, we are going to be revealing Huxley's picture to you guys into the world and we're so excited to share our little boy with you guys. Just so tremendously excited. We'll have a link to the fundraiser um, if you guys want to donate um, in the description box below. But we have a thousand piece puzzle and every time someone donates, each puzzle piece is worth five dollars. Every time someone donates, we start putting the puzzle pieces together and every 
She makes it sound so cute, huh? Oh my gosh, it's so cute. You can just put the pictures together. Nah, it's just a way that she can get more money from you guys because they are so cash hungry. Someone asked, why were they asking for donations? Why were they getting donations? Because people were actually donating to Micah so that she can purchase Huxley. Like her subscribers and her fan base pretty much bought this child for her and she never even fully adopted him. She just had him for a couple years, claimed that she adopted him, did some interviews, some promo, and when he was a little too much for her, she just gave him up. And keep in mind, she did all of this whole puzzle face reveal moment, yet like at the same time, she's got Huxley at home with duct tape on his hand, a little hand glued on there. Like this is the crime I am talking about and she should really be held accountable for what she did to Huxley here. This picture is so disgusting, so disturbing and no child should have duct tape wrapped around their fist and then have a little fake hand glued onto their duct taped fist. This is a crime, YouTube. This is a crime, Google, and you employ this person. You actually play, pay James Stoffer $300,000 a year, yet you allow him to do these kind of things online. And if you don't know who James Stoffer is, he is Micah's husband. I feel like Micah Stoffer is like the most, like the more famous one in this situation, yet James Stoffer does have more subscribers, makes a lot more money, and I think there's a reason for that actually, and I, I'll get into it for in a second. But um, I wanna talk about how James Stoffer has his channel, Stoffer's Garage, where he has over a million subscribers. Like how did this dude in 2020 give up his son, pretty much escape any scandal at all, and continue to grow his channel up to a million subscribers. And guys, he's making a ton of money from his YouTube channel up to $300,000 a year. And that's definitely what he's making because every piece of content he creates is totally monetized. Um, no car cleaning things are going to go against any YouTube rules. But why does YouTube support this behavior, support these people? Well, because this man brings in a lot of money. As you can see, YouTube probably gets double what he has. Like YouTube barely pays as is. So if he's making this much money, um, he's got to be bringing in a ton to Google. And I just don't understand why people keep supporting and like rewarding bad behavior like this. Like, why are we making crabby people famous? And also, why is there a double standard between Micah and James? Like, James is able to walk free, create his channel, yet Micah here is canceled, hasn't posted in five months, isn't posting on Instagram, completely radio silent. It makes me think this is planned. And do you wanna know why I think it's planned? Well, you may have heard of Fox Cleaning. It is James Stoffer's cleaning company, and it's pretty random and crappy or whatever. I don't, like, who who, who in their right mind is, like, excited to buy from Fox Clean? Like, oh my god, I'm so excited to buy from Fox Clean. Well, in my opinion, in my thoughts, I think that Fox Clean was pretty planned in this whole situation. So they posted that whole video, you know, about Huxley giving up their son around May. And if you go and look at some of the records, you would see that, well, James Stoffer was actually filing LLC paperwork for Fox Clean around the same time. This makes me think that they knew when they were going into the rehoming video that they would be kind of like putting the blame more onto Micah, that she will be kind of taking the hit, that maybe Stoffer Media, their other LLC that Huxley was an employee at, would be taking a larger hit and then Fox Clean can kind of be their next avenue out of here. Their way to escape the Huxley drama, you know, create a whole nother entity and move forward with their plans. Um, <clears throat> you can actually see he registered the company Fox Clean with this date on May 26, 2020. This is insane to me because it makes me think that this whole situation, this video from beginning to end, like everything was so spot on and planned and we got Micah Stoffer's channel demonetized, but like he got away with it and he's making almost like double what Micah was making. So when you think, oh, these people are like, you know, they're obviously really hurt financially because of this. I mean, yeah, she lost some sponsors, but like James Stoffer is over here thriving on YouTube and they continue to reward him even though he did crappy things to his son. And I do hold the whole duct tape situation. Um, I hold James accountable to that as well because he definitely should have 
you know, I don't know. The police should have investigated this. This should have been questioned. I have so many problems with this instance. And I also believe that Google and YouTube needs to do more to protect children online. Not only do children use and view this platform, but children are put on this platform and there are no guidelines or protections for them. I want to talk a little bit about some of Micah Stoffer's posts because you guys know Micah Stoffer could be maybe the most cringe mom on YouTube. Like, can we give her that title? I don't think anyone would like fight for it because I think she might be it. So when, um, when <laughs> this is actually insane to me. So Huxley had issues, you know, moving from China to America, living with a new family, um, obviously a very high stress situation for a child with autism. As someone who has worked with children with autism, I have seen children who are far worse than Huxley, some, you know, who aren't who are less on the scale and actually seem to be a wonderful child from what I've seen online and really not as severe as some people or as Micah would like to make him seem. So one thing she posted on this Chinese adoption questions page was that Huxley had issues with hoarding food and um, he doesn't like to talk a lot. He, you know, has, he does a lot of things with his thumbs. Um, he's hoarding the food and they're asking him, why is he doing this? Like, how can we help? And I just think, um, I don't know. What I take away from this is that they don't really understand their child at all. They don't understand him at all or understand that he could be in a high stress situation, high pressure, um, really just a lot of anxiety with the movement and so overwhelmed that, yeah, the eating is probably going to be weird for probably five, ten years. He's a young boy. He's his whole concept of food has changed coming into this house with tons of food in the pantries, um, food available all the time, other children, parents eating around you. And I just think it's really weird that they um, were so focused on that. I feel like it was maybe a bigger problem than what we thought. Because later on, I found another question where they, again, talked about his obsession with food. And they talk about how he just stares at everyone after he eats and while they're eating. She says, you can't eat food without him watching you eat, even if he has food in front of him. Has anyone experienced this? Does it lessen within time? I'm sure it lessens within time. And it drives my husband bonkers. <gasps> wow, it drives your husband bonkers. That is so funny to me. I just think that um, he drives me bonkers and that he's a, a man child. He is literally a man child in flip flops cleaning his cars. And um, I hope he feels good about himself and about what he's done as a father. Remember those videos I've played on my channel where he's um, telling Huxley, you know what, you are in your forever home. This is your forever. I'm going to be your father forever. After seeing those videos and knowing what he did, I can never take this man seriously and I can never support his activity on YouTube. Nor do I believe that YouTube or Google should be paying him. Like this dude just, YouTube, like, so if you're a YouTuber, you get paid once a month uh, at the end of the month. And this dude just got paid $30,000 from YouTube. And he has committed crimes on this platform throughout this year. So please tell me, like we need an HR department or something because something is up here. And thank you, Jessica, for your donation. I really appreciate that. Um, something I also want to talk about is this one post she also posted on the page where she talked about how Huxley would rock himself back and forth a ton to the point where he would be bruising on his chest and it on his back and he would be in pain. And I just feel like, uh, Micah never understood this child. I opened up this video showing you guys a crazy clip of Micah Stoffer literally saying that she birthed her son like through her heart. Like, oh my gosh, do I need to play that again? Because that was actually crazy. Like, I don't even know how I'm going to function if someone tells me that I can't bring a Huxley. Like, this isn't just a kid in China. This is my son. Like, this is my son. Like, I have already birthed him in my heart. He is my son. You were so excited to get him. So excited to get him. 
but then, you know, gave him away like that. It just doesn't really add up to me. And I just feel like she never really understood him at all or even gave the, him the time to understand him. Everything that Micah does is about Micah. It's selfish. It's about her world. Like, we are literally... And me, myself, I am just a human living in Micah's world because she does believe that everything revolves around her and her child having anxiety, physically hurting himself because of the stress is, um, well, her first reaction is to go to Facebook and write a question like this. It just makes me think that this woman never put any time or energy into actually investing in his care, especially when it came to his treatment. She would talk on camera saying, yo, yeah, the doctor thinks that he should be having an iPad and he would be able to communicate easier with that. But you know what? We want to do sign language. We want to teach him sign language. Well, <clears throat> your son understands Chinese. You understand no Chinese. Um, you want to teach him what? American sign language? Like, can we please take a, a step back? I feel like y if you're going to go and adopt a child, you need to understand what you're getting yourself into. Micah obviously has no idea what she's doing or even like I don't understand how she has so many kids. Like, how are you a mother to other children? I'm actually worried about these other kids because she was going to adopt again, another round two of adopting. Like, we are talking about starting adoption round two next month. How did you know you were ready for round two? My God, I don't know if you were actually ever ready for round two or round one. Like, how are you going to go adopt another child again? when you're dealing with a child that you already don't like, obviously, you gave him up. How can you say you loved Huxley when you gave him up? I just, the, it's so tragic to me. Um, again, we're praying about adopting again. And my husband wanted me to ask what special needs would you consider minor or relatively easy to manage that most people wouldn't consider easy. Wow. <laughs> seriously like you just want you want to have a child with disabilities so you can flex about the disability but you don't really want to put any work in like at all that just sounds like really hard because Huxley from the videos I saw he wasn't this monster aggressive child that you tried to tell the police I think the only problem here are the parents seriously um and I just again like she just wants kids who are easy to manage. Literally, in quotes, anything surgically correctable or easy to manage day to day. She wants to get a broken child and then fix him for a video. She wants to adopt a child with issues and then manage, the each, manage it each day, day to day, and make it seem easy or cool or whatever. Like, it's literally content fishing. She is fishing in for the content, trying to figure out what it's going to be next. Like, whether she can find a kid that she can, you know, do a, a fundraiser and, you know, pay for a surgery and after those videos are done, I don't know, do you just give back the kid to the orphanage? It's just so heartless to me and it reminds me how um, precious adopted people are and how adoption is such an amazing um, tool and it should be very, very monitored and taken more seriously because as someone who is gay, I will probably be adopting one day. As someone who has two best friends who are adopted, I understand what it's like to be from an adoptive home and to hear their struggles and understand how they feel, especially when it comes to this Huxley situation. They agree with me that these people are actually insane. And to think that they can use their Chinese adopted son to create content and clout and gain popularity is foul. It is foul, Micah. And I know that James Stoffer is all up here on this platform trying to clean cars and, you know, push you guys through because he is. I mean, he's making $300,000 a year. So obviously he's doing really well. But you... Are coming, you aren't coming back. My goal now moving forward after we know, you know, Huxley is safe. We've already confirmed that he is totally fine. I know who his mother is. I've gone to her Facebook. I've looked through her pictures. I've seen pictures of her kids with his kids and not trying to be a creeper or a stalker or anything, but you know, a friend sent it to me. I looked at it. I confirmed what was going on and he's totally safe. He's totally fine. I'm good with that. My issue now is that James Stoffer is out here making $300,000 on YouTube when he was literally duct taping his son's hand within the last year or so, 
on the platform and he's also done other things that are really sketchy he's also purchasing uh, views on his channel he's his wife is buying subscribers like these people are breaking YouTube rules yet YouTube just doesn't want to hold them accountable because they want to collect that money at the end of the day the money is the root of evil it's what took Huxley from his home in China brought him here worked him for a couple years like a child labor star and you know caused so much turmoil in his life this kid has been through so many different homes i can't imagine just sleeping with myself at night knowing that i've done i've done this to this child but you know what micah is sleeping perfectly fine probably in her california king bed that huxley paid for Huxley's time, energy, and presence paid for. And his storyline. Without his storyline, Micah Stauffer just wouldn't be that interesting. She used him so much, and that's why she is gone. But we need that same energy for James. We seriously do. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to hold James Stauffer accountable, and I'm going to call out Micah. If you have any clips you want me to react to, link them below, or send me an email at sloanwellknown at gmail.com. I've also got a lot of content coming this week, so if you have any ideas for me, comment below, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys so much. I think I hit 75,000 subscribers today, so thank you guys so much for the love, and thank you for like hanging in there with me, and we're going to continue to call out these toxic people, protect our children, and make the world a better place because YouTube's not going to do it for us. I hope you guys enjoyed and make sure you have a safe night and I'll see you guys again here soon. Bye. Ooh, bye.